just say continue. All right. Welcome. We will be starting in about 60 seconds. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. We will be getting started in about 30 seconds. Welcome, thank you for joining us. We will be starting in about 10 seconds. Okay, it's time to get started. Welcome everyone. I'm Cliff Lynch, the director of CNI. Um, you've arrived at uh, the last of our project briefings for the second week of our virtual conference. And this Friday, we will be having a wonderful talk from one of the great clear uh, postdoctoral fellows who is at the, um, the uh, Schomburg Center at the New York Public Library, Rebecca Beck. And she's going to give us a presentation on designing inclusive digital exhibitions, which is something that um, has become a very important activity for libraries, especially for libraries that are rich with special collections. Um, she'll take uh, questions at the end of her presentation. Diane Goldenberg Hart will moderate those. Uh, you will see at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A button and you can use that to enter questions at any time. And uh, Diane will um, sort through those and pass them to Rebecca when she takes questions and answers. So with that, let me just once again, welcome you, say, Please join us for more project briefing sessions next week. And over to you, Rebecca. All right. Thank you, Dave. Um, hello, everyone. And just kind of thank you for joining us today and joining me and just to listen um, to me. So this project is uh, an ongoing project. And I've been working on it for a couple of, um, let's say, uh, month now. So what the focus is, as Keith said, I'm a clear postdoctoral fellow at the Schomburg uh, uh, Center for Research in Black Culture. So, and then because we are a special setting, my, one of my job is to see, like search out the, 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 the collection that we have and see what is it that we can present. And then my background is actually in learning design and technology. Uh, I have a dual degree in learning design technology and comparative international education. So one thing that I've always been interested in is how do we design, all my research has been around how do we design learning environments that are, can, that are inclusive. So based on that, I started thinking about, I'm putting together an exhibition, how do I make sure that this exhibition is inclusive to all patrons or uh, visitors that are going to, you know, come and see the exhibition because Shamba is definitely a very popular place and they are uh, kind of like everything that's happening there is really well attended. So with that in mind, I started thinking, researching, how, what does it mean designing an inclusive uh, digital exhibition. So my own definition, and I know most of you know that, you know, in, uh, inclusivity has been, uh, accessibility actually, the word that they, use, they usually use has been, it has been a kind of a big, has uh, received a big push within uh, design and uh, higher education uh, learning environments, but also at libraries and Shomba being a special place, I was like, how do we do that? So my own understanding of designing an, an inclusive, uh, digital exhibition is about designing an exhibition 
using digital platforms that will be inclusive of the blind, the low, deaf, and hard of hearing patrons or visitors. So what do I mean by that? I mean by that, that when I'm designing something, I have to make sure that the experiences that I want somebody who sees to have, I want to make sure that the person who's blind, low in vision, uh, uh, low, has low vision, who's deaf or hard of hearing can definitely have the same experience. So here's how I think. I thought about the process. I'm sharing that with you, and I'm definitely be happy to, you know, hear what you have to say about it. So, uh, when I think about designing that inclusive learning, uh, uh, design that inclusive digital exhibition, I'm thinking about the process. So, what, what, I, why I use the process because it's not, it's something that's kind of, you know, uh, uh, going through a situation where it's not like step one, step two, step three, step four. But it's definitely something that you go back and forth. So you come, you go to it and then you come back to it again. So what it means generally is that you have to make inclusivity or uh, accessibility, but I'm using inclusivity here, part and a, a part and a part of the digital exhibition design. So what do I mean? Do I, what does that, does that mean? It just means that you have to understand your digital environment. You have to know what are the affordances, right? What can you do? What like I'm out of show, but what's it that I have there? What are the affordances? What can I or can I not do? And how can I use the available the, the available to create a desirable inclusive digital environment or digital exhibition? Because I have something that I have in mind and uh, the, uh, the the facility, the the, uh, the Schomburg Media Library has something that's already set. So how do I make sure that with what I have in mind, how can I use it to create that digital uh, inclusive uh, exhibition? So the next thing that I added to the process as well, how now I have to choose the items that I want to use for the exhibition. I have to think about digital technologies available for inclusive design that I can use again, keeping in mind that I have to make sure that I understand my digital environment that's already available at the chamber or at my location. And what experience do I want for all visitors? Why, what, what is it that I want them to share? What is it that I want them to learn? What is it that I want them to take away? It has to be uh, uh, you know, um, the same for the people who, have, uh, um, who can see, but also for the people who are hard of hearing or have other disabilities. So with that in mind, and I say to myself, I, I, I'm saying that inclusive digital uh, uh, exhibitions just kind of require a shift of paradigm. So have have to shift your way of thinking about exhibition, about digital exhibition, because usually we just think about what is that the visual people can do. So that shift in mind happened. And it brings me now to my case at the Shomba that I'm going to share with you right now. So the Shomba, as you know, is a, a, a is a, a, like we often say that that's where Black history is every single day. Like you don't have a month for a Black, so we're definitely focusing on the Black uh, Black history, Black experiences. Worldwide. So you have things about Africa, you have things about uh, items, collections about Africa, the Black in the diaspora almost everywhere. And uh, and because it's kind of key and located at Harlem is really part of the community, is really something that's uh, owned by the community. It's an entity on its own, right? So it's kind of something that's owned by the community and it's just that, that partnership is there. And we're, with the collections, so when I started for the collections, my theme, what I want, I, I've been working on is uh, designing, um, presenting actually, the strategy use of card visit by black people in the uh, 19th century. So the whole idea behind the card visit was that card visit were kind of a small portrait card that people were using in the 19th century. It came from uh, Europe and then became popular in the US in the 19th century where people were using to kind of share past information, but also uh, uh, keep memories, but propaganda as well. So they used in diverse way. But that was focusing now on the uh, black people. How were they using that uh, those card visits? And what is it that they were trying to show through the card visit? And how can we read that? So for somebody who's visual, uh, who can see, who doesn't have any uh, kind of visual impairment, so it's easy for you if I put uh, the card of visit together because you can see, then you can read and have uh, see the postures, the movements, the 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 the, the, the what the the, the the dressing code that the people were using, those black people were using. But how do I make sure now that uh, somebody who's blind, hard of hearing, can definitely 
you know, uh, see what somebody who is, um, who can see will have. So, and that will bring you back. And if you remember again, that will bring you back to what I was saying when I was saying that the paradigm shift, what type of experience, what is it I have available in my digital environment at the Shomba. So here is how the Shomba digital environment looks like. So we have, uh, when we have our digital exhibition, so we call this place the media gallery. So you have a, a video wall where uh, I'm going to show that the next time you have four touch screens. And then with the four touch screens, what you have that the video wall, what can play, you have slideshow that can play, but you also have uh, videos, right, that can play. The next thing that we have with the, yeah, the video, okay. Now what you have, the touch screen, you have to, four touch screens. So, and all of us know that when you have a touch screen that you have to touch and for it to play. So the touch screen, of course, you can have a, a, a place for YouTube. You can have, they also have on the side a uh, headset that you have to press for you to be able to uh, listen to what has been playing on the screen. Okay, you have a place where you have a, a, a section that they call gallery here, where you have you can add a, a collection of pictures and put it all of that together. So now, understanding now my digital environment and those are the affordances that that can uh, you know that it gives me. So how do I now use this affordances when I'm trying to target? the somebody who's blind or low in vision when i'm trying to target uh somebody who's hard of hearing right who's deaf or hard of hearing so those are kind of the challenges that i started think uh, thinking about but also uh trying to kind of handle them in a way that is going to make it uh a worth uh, a worthy experience not only for all the patrons that are visiting the place so here's how i started approaching all of this with all that, because I know that you know the uh, the, the video wall, how can we see videos? I said, okay, I definitely need to create videos with audio recordings. I definitely need to create long text description of images of my CDVs because remember again, I'm using the card of visits, right? So if you and I can see, then we can see how people were, uh, uh, you know, the position, the movement, they're making the position, the dress that they were having. So I need to create that. So how do I make sure that I describe? the uh what i see to somebody who cannot see and the next thing i say provide audio recording of the cdvs and description so okay so now providing the short history because you know with every exhibition you have the write up you have an introduction so i have to make sure that somebody who cannot see as well can definitely read that but somebody who's also deaf, I have to make sure that, you know, the writings are kind of, you know, uh, uh, or long vision, actually, I have to make sure that the writings is written clear, clearly enough that he can also see, no matter, uh, uh, irrespective of the location, the position that he takes within the media gallery uh, room. The next thing I started thinking about, was also, I definitely need to create a narrative, because you remember for with exhibitions, you have you usually have the labels, but you also have the, the normal exhibition, but you also have uh, an introduction, kind of giving you the history. So definitely create a narrative so that somebody who kind of see can definitely follow through as someone who says. Find a narrator or uh, voiceover. So finding that you need to have somebody who has a, a, a kind of a voice, that some we were definitely easy to hear and listen to. So those are, uh, but also designing a tactile map of the building because again, the chamber, as you saw, one of the side, when people come in, how do we make sure that they can definitely get into the place? So giving them that tactile map so that they can find their way into uh, the media gallery lab, the media uh, uh, gallery room, not lab. All right. So, those are kind of the challenges, but also the ways that I've started addressing those cha uh, challenges. But also with the touch screen, one thing I thought about was to create, uh, uh, um, how am I going to say, videos that people can definitely play on all the, um, the screen. So, so far because of the COVID-19, of course, uh, we're not able to put that in place. But this is definitely a work in progress, and because uh, throughout the year I'm going to have a, a, my post for the my postdoctoral uh, fellowship, I'm going to have the opportunity to definitely um, design more uh, uh, 
exhibitions. So I'm hoping that uh, once I have this pilot set up and then learn from that, then make it a uh, kind of a practice that, you know, as libraries, as, uh, you know, uh, research institutions or uh, with special collections, whenever we want to design something, we want to think about people who have, people of our abilities in a sense. So with that, I would say thank you. And I'm open to the questions now. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, that was really very interesting to think about making these materials um, more accessible and available to people who might not be able to experience them in the way that we would imagine uh, mm -hmm. would be um, most available for those exhibit experiences. We really appreciate you coming to talk to us about that. A lot to think about. Um, I'm Diane Goldenberg Hart with CNI. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us today for this really interesting webinar. Um, I'd like to open the floor for questions now. If you have any questions for Rebecca, please feel free to type them in the Q&A box, which at the bottom of your screen you should see um, a Q&A um, icon. You just click on that and you can type your questions in. Um, you can also type them into the chat if you would like. We'll be monitoring those there. And while we are um, giving you a moment to think about what, uh, what questions Rebecca has raised with her presentation, let me just take a moment to remind you about um, our ongoing uh, virtual uh, meeting, CNI's Spring 2020 virtual meeting. I've pasted into the chat box there a um, URL, which will take you directly to the schedule for the rest of the webinars, which will be ongoing through the end of May. So there's a lot to choose from and we hope that you'll come back and attend some more of, of the great offerings we have planned for you. Um, while we're waiting for some questions from the audience to come in, Rebecca, if I may, I something occurred to me while you were speaking yeah. that I've always wondered about in terms of trying to make um, special collections more accessible, especially to the visually impaired. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something so special about just viewing archival material uh, that goes beyond the, the, the text that you might read uh, on, a, on, a, on a letter or a, 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 a visiting card or an artifact of that kind. Just seeing the material, seeing how it's presented, noticing the discoloration of the paper and which yeah. gives you a clue into its age. How can you translate that sort of non-verbal, non-textual information in an inclusive environment? That, that's definitely a great question. And uh, when I was actually working on the project, one thing that, because I'm working with the images, so how do I make sure that people can, like somebody who cannot see can see? So that's where, uh, with the, how do they call now, the Foundation for the Blind, they have a process that they call a uh, long text form description mm -hmm. of everything that you see. So what does that mean? It does mean that actually, I'm, you, you, they have training that they provide that, but what it does mean is that I'm going to type in, describe what I see on that, let's say, uh, printed material or whatever see, in such a way that the person who does not see, when he listens to what I'm describing, can have a sense of what I'm seeing. So oh. that, that's the way to approach that. So you have short form uh, text description where you will see it in, on every website and when they see an image, you will see that's a lady position. Like, but when it's kind of a long, uh, long form um, text description, one thing I did with my uh, see a card visit, for example, was when you have a lady sitting, I would describe the dress code, like the dress, how she was dressed, the position, and blah, blah. So it gives them some kind of sense of what is it that um, I'm, I'm seeing. I see. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And it looks like we have a question now. Let me go ahead and read that to you, Rebecca. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it sounds like this exhibit will be mounted in the digital exhibit room at the Schomburg, so it was designed to use the particular equipment there. As you designed the exhibit, did you find that you wished you had additional types of equipment that would give more options in inclusive design? And thank you for a wonderful presentation, he says. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for your question. Yeah, 
And that's why I was like, you know what? I started to think about, okay, you know what? I need to use what I have available <laughs> to kind of create that because I wish, and I was like, I was saying, so one thing, one thing that they got though, which was good, was that when I started talking to them about that, they were like, oh, we never thought about this, uh, you know, the low, the blind, and now we have to think about it. So um, what they did is that we have, uh, they have a provider who is designing their interactive environment. So I have to set a meeting with them and say, hey guys, you guys, they're like, we did not think about this. So we are going to the next phase is going to, for us to go into a redesigning mm-hmm. of the uh, interactive place so that we have, they, when they're designing coding, whatever, they have these people in mind. And they were like, we did, did not think about this. And mm-hmm. I was, uh, everybody, this is the time. So yes, I wished I was because like when you walk into the, the room, there are other, uh, other libraries actually that are doing that. There's kind of some kind of sensor because when you walk into the room, because it's designed only for the visual, people who can see. So you have to go on the touch screens and press mm. to be able to play. So now, but if we had that in mind, they would have a sensor that when somebody comes in, it senses him in front of the screen and it can automatically play. So that's why, because of what I had, I had to create videos in a sense so that they can automatically, because the person who is blind would not know where to press on the touch screen. So we had to play automatically. So yes, absolutely. I wish I had a, but that's uh, something that the Shomba is definitely going to look at. And I'm going to, once all of this is over, the next step setting a meeting with the, the design, the, the company that designed the, 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 the place for us to bring that now into, uh, you know, have that into the design of uh, the digital uh, media. Yeah. So interesting. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, lots of, of uh, neat stuff coming down the pike at the Schomburg, it sounds yeah. like. I'll look forward to seeing that, um, yeah. that exhibit. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. Uh, it looks like we don't have any more questions right now. Um, okay. Have you got any closing thoughts before we? Uh, the closing thoughts is just because I feel like this is uh, an emerging field in a sense, and specifically for the digital uh, uh, exhibitions. So one thing that I'm planning to do is conducting a study, definitely after this one, is that with the people who are going to come in and listening to them saying, hey, what is that we did wrong? What is it that we did right with a specific uh, focus group? And say, what is that we did wrong? And coming up with hopefully principles of how do you design, you know, uh, uh, di- how do you put together a digital exhibition that's going to be used inclusive uh, for all people with all abilities. So I think that's the next, uh, you know, the next, st- uh, next step, next phase in this process. So hopefully, I hope we all stay well and safe, and then (laughs) we'll be able to go back to, uh, maybe not normalcy, but go back to, you know, uh, because I don't think everything is going to be the same again, but uh, going back to kind of, you know, doing what we love and and enjoy doing. Indeed. Thank you, guys. uh, Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, for Mm -hmm. giving us this great talk. Uh, I am hearing virtual applause coming down the internet too. Thank you. Oh, feel free to contact me, by the way. My uh, contact, my email is there. Uh, My uh, Twitter account is there too, so feel free to contact me. I would love actually to hear because uh, it's definitely good to have a group of people with whom you you think through all of it. So definitely. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Uh, Have a wonderful wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Be well. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.